awesome saucers welcome again to another day with kai farm so today we want to answer some of the questions that we posed on ourselves last week um, from our walk through that we did we want to check into one of our better hives which is hive number nine to see if there's actually any honey in there and then showcase to you the kind of frames that are available with and, and the differences of how we classify of when something is ready to be harvested and kind of give you our perspective on that all right so let's go so what we're what you're looking at here is hive number nine pretty much one of her i would say her best producer this year um so far um for the year we have pretty much taken away one deep full of honey so far and i think about two from the brood chamber um, when we did some early extraction in january so there are about um, 12 frames in total from this hive deep frames in total it is in a double chamber setting for the queen so the queen would have two deep boxes to as laying area then there's a queen excluder right here then this is a shallow box for honey surplus and then this deep is on there for honey surplus as well so we're gonna pop in here and see how far they have pretty much reach in terms of capping off all those nectar that they have brought in all right so looking at the top section here you see we have a full complement up here one two three four five six seven eight nine um, we kind of run nine frames in the supers um, basically especially when we're working with full fully built out comb and it, it gets us the frames a little bit fatter than normal so it's more easier to actually use the uncapping knife to cut off the or to uncap the actual honey when it's that time yes so let's see how the first one here is looking so if you look at this frame quite packed with nectar in there yes so i'm just pretty much waiting on them to cap this off but usually to figure out if it's ready you can do or if there's fresh nectar in this frame you can do a shake test which is pretty much just holding the frame over the hive and shaking usually if there's fresh nectar you'll see quite a lot of um, droplets of nectar on the area where you shake it so there's not quite a lot of it um, but our preference would we would love to see where they actually start capping off most of the frame so right now they're not quite ready to cap it off because i'm looking in quite a few other cells and the nectar or honey that they have there isn't at a high level to the tip of the cells so that's one indicator um, when they start capping off the frame for the honey to be cured you'll typically see a situation like this where there's a capping over it so this side they'll start to cap and they'll basically they'll generally move from the top section downward yes all right so this is feeling a little bit more heavier um so we can suspect that this will have a little bit more cap on it all right whoa so this this frame is very heavy guys all right so looking at this this will give you a better representation of what i'm talking about so you see how this is almost capped off with a little white sheet right so this hive this frame seeing how it's being capped off and looking at the how much nectar is in the rest of the cells i can typically use my judgment and say this honey or this frame of honey is ready we can also do the shake test on it hmm, so they're very they're really not pleased with me coming here and messing around with their honey so from what we're seeing the middle frame the one we took out just now was halfway capped the one beside it we kind of got a glimpse of it as well that it's halfway capped as well so typically what i'll do is i'll come and i'll take out the ones from the center that are kept off put the ones that aren't kept in the middle and leave them behind um, if, if we're gonna leave back some for them in this scenario we pretty much will give them there about um, one or two more weeks 
before we come and just take everything from them because if up here is looking like this in terms of being kept off I can guarantee you that this shallow box here would basically have a lot of cap frame in there what that is is basically a full deep super of honey and a full shallow super of honey all right now the crucial thing is that not all hives in my apiary will have this kind of productivity some of them have not showed this kind of productivity you know um, for the ones that really didn't show much productivity at all we kind of call those queens and we're going through the process of actually well we, we did the queen grafting we made some new queens from the productive hives um, and we're just going to put them through a phase where we assess them in nukes see how they develop and then we'll switch them over if they're highly productive into the non-productive hive yes so that's kind of like the sustainability of the apiary um, look for the highly productive hives make new queens or daughters from those productive hives and basically propagate that um, good performance in the apiary yes so this colony has been exceptionally well this year um, so what I'll be doing is potentially mo making more daughters from her I kind of recognize this excellence from last year and that's why I made I had made three queens from this hive um, last year in her first ever trial at queen grafting and those queens are pretty much in hive number 10 sorry hive number 11 hive number 13 and there's one in the shallow setup that we have over there so three queens they're doing quite well they're queens that actually show excellence in terms of how they build up and how they manage their their brood cluster this queen is pretty much showing me from her performance and from the, the performance of her daughters show me that it's a good queen that i can propagate from right so this queen i'll definitely be making more daughters from and hopefully i'll get some gentler stock ideally this queen or the colony isn't this aggressive this is just a representation of what can happen when a hive get really strong you know they will definitely defend their colony um, in terms of their ex extreme aggression the only come out at me when I disturb the hive um, sim similar to when I'm trying to disturb their honey that they have stored here they have this kind of aggression and you can't blame the hive right um, if you're coming to steal their honey and all their hard work that they put in to store this honey they're gonna defend it yes so the, uh, the, the good thing about it is their aggression or defensiveness isn't prolonged um, so as we speak right now I only have bees hovering around me they're not attacking me yes and pretty much as i said they're really going after the camera and not necessarily me so looking at this we know the honey is doing quite well up here so we're gonna actually remove this box check down here to see what's happening and as well as remove that and go into the brood section just to see how it's looking all right so we'll also give you a preview of that as well so let's give me a second let me get this heavy box off because this is going to be very heavy all right one of the things we suspect might happen here is that they might leave some space for the queen to lay in the central section we're hoping that's not the case and they've actually filled in every single frame here so how much frames is this oh so this actually have 10 frames in here so we didn't put nine so first frame to the corner as you see pretty much 90% kept off um, with the exception of the lower section which it seems as if they're leaving space for the queen um, so that for sure isn't gonna stop us from actually taking this shallow to the extraction room when we're ready to take away honey from this hive next thing we're gonna do is just pop into the middle section test one of the middle frames see how far ahead it is kept all right so there you go nice cap frame pretty lovely right left to right similar to the other side as well so this frame and this shallow is looking prime to actually take away from them so for sure 
we'll be taking this shallow away to the extraction room um, the next extraction bay we have so this is pretty much the top section of the double brood chamber setup all right so let's just pop in see what's happening in a couple of the frames we don't necessarily want to disturb everything up here we're just pretty much checking the end frames and probably one or two of the middle frames so first frame out we see a lot of honeys on this frame as well um kept off honey so even if we're a little bit greedy we can actually take this frame of honey from them this side not much more pollen on this side but it's a drone frame that's in there for them so eventually a frame like this will cycle out of the hive soon um, to pretty much get these drone cell frames out and put nice foundation sheets in there for the queen to have more actual worker cell frames to lay into we're gonna take a look at this frame here which looks like it's packed with honey as well so you see they're getting a little bit calmer now still a lot of honey on this frame as well but we don't mind we don't want to take everything from them we're only taking away what's in the shallows you know and leave them with this bit yes so we're gonna take one more look at a frame here then show you one of the frames to the other side yes and see we have a nice brood frame here wall to wall lovely frame of brood can't complain about it love to see these frames yes and this is why i want to propagate from this queen she has very great laying potential she's been productive her aggressive or defensiveness isn't high um, the only thing we are not sure about is terms of her vi um, varroa mite load but we suspect a high hive wouldn't be this productive with a high varroa mite load on it all right so it's kind of like a assume, an assumption that it wouldn't have you know or a lot of virus not virus but varroa mite load on it because one of the things we have been trying to do is control the number of drones they can actually rear in the colony we do leave one or two frames with drone cells in there or space for them to make drone cells because you don't really want to stop them from doing the natural thing in terms of creating some drones yes and ideally for a hive this productive you'd want her to make drones so those drones can actually go out and mate with virgin queens yes so we're just gonna pop out that last frame there see what's happening and then we'll close her back up all right so this side we see another nice frame of honey mostly drones so as i said we don't mind her producing drones um there you go i've done swarm control on this hive several times in terms of shaking away nurse bees um, from this hive multiple times every time we did our queen rearing initiative we shook away there about two we shook away two to three frames of brood from this hive and it's a, it has grown back exponentially every time so quite pleased with it how it has performed um, so for sure we'll be making some more daughters from her and the good thing about the double chamber setup is that we we did it i believe we did it right you know um in terms of changing it out into a double chamber setup remember you know we started off the season with all the hives in a single chamber setup and we kind of made some plans we observed the ones that were doing exceptionally well and we calculated and assumed that these would do well if we change them out to double chamber setup and we wanted to maximize on the actual pollen that they'll be bringing in for the past two months and that's what they have done that pollen has helped them to grow exponentially in these two chambers yes and um, what we might do later on is if we're gonna do any more queen rearing we'll probably shake off some nurse bees from this again um, to kind of push the population down a bit and that's it so basically this is an insight into as i said one of our highly productive hives um, just wanted to bring you along show you the different stages of honey 
um, in terms of the frames, how we can test for it. One way we showed you is pretty much doing the shake test to see if any nectar is dropping out. The other way I do it is also when I'm actually going to extract it, I use a refractometry. I don't know the correct name, I think it's called a refractometer. Um, what it does, it tests the water content in the actual honey. So normally honey water content ideal is there about anything below um, 18% um, but once it's below 20 it should not ferment you know that's ideally what you want from a, a recording of water um, percentage or moisture percentage so those are kept so the content the water content in it would definitely be below 18 uh, for sure um, for the ones that are open you might find that water content fluctuates between 18 to 20 there about so as yeah. usual thanks for tuning in your time was greatly appreciated we just want to implore you to give the video a like share with your friends and definitely hit that subscription and notification bell so you can see when new videos come out and peace out